you say probably not?
page 232 in your hymnals, Look and Live, page 232. Let's all stand, shall we? Page 232. I'm a message from the Lord, hallelujah. A message unto you I'll give. He's recorded in his word, hallelujah. It is only that you Fellowship. How many of you fellowshiped? You got around and shook somebody's hand. How many of you too good for that? We'll come to you if you won't come to us. So just so you know. The lobby clear? Get everybody out of the lobby in here. Unless there's some people we want back there. Like here comes one. We want him to stay back there, but sorry. Oh, you'll never be embarrassed that this church will never <laughs> embarrass you. Ready to pray? We need to pray. Heavenly Father, you gave us this day. We have nothing to do with that. We're just supposed to show up and do what you want. Lord, we pray today for those who can't be here. We miss them. We pray for those who are traveling, those who aren't feeling well those who are struggling with something. But, Lord, we know that you know about us. You know where we're at. You know if we're trying or not. And so as we're in your house today, we want this to be special to you and for you. We thank you that as we come together, we, the song says, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. And that's what the scriptures teach. We know that you are alive, you're real, and we want everybody to know about you. We want lost people to know that Jesus saves, 
And we want saved people to know that Jesus satisfies. Lord, I pray that will be the message to each of us that we would leave this building if we're not saved, that we would leave knowing we could be born again, we could know we're going to heaven. And if we know that, that we'd leave this building knowing that nothing's better than Jesus, that he can do everything for us. And I pray this in his name. Amen. Thank you. You could be seated. Page 221. Only a sinner, page 221. what I am. I don't know what you are. I'm only a sinner saved by grace. Do you have a bulletin, please? Would you grab that? At 930 this morning, we're going to have Sunday school. At 1030, we're going to have morning service. At five o'clock, there's choir. Tonight we'll be here at 6 in the evening. Hope you join us. You need it. We don't have it because you don't have anything to do. We have it because you need it. Amen. Thank you. Backside. Wednesday midweek, Lord willing, if he doesn't come back and we're all here, if I get raptured, you go ahead and have church. And if I'm here and you're all gone, I'll have church. The kids will be here. We have something for kids age three through sixth grade. The teens are in the youth center. The adults are here. There's a jail service on the 25th. An afterglow on the 28th. Half of July is over. There is a sign-up list for afterglows if you would like to sponsor one for the teens. You can uh, do that on the bulletin board. Let, let's do this right. How many of you have ever visited this church? All your hands should go up. Are you not? I, I asked that question, everybody looks like. Is it that early? Well, you want to try it again? Let you out early if you answer right. 
I'm not asking that question. How about Steve Snyder? Introduce the couple that is with you. Would you do that? <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Van Dyke. Good to see you. Good to have you, Van Dykes. Jim and I worship at St. Martin's. We always see each other at Martin's, so we always worship there at St. Martin's, where Larry works. Well, where Larry shows up. Larry doesn't work there. He's always messing around. He's eating grapes. He's in the produce. Ushers come. Ushers come. you imagine I would say anything like that? How many? You've been there three years? Wow. That's great. Pray. We have people that are, uh, pray for, I, I, it's a long explanation. Becky Bodie's son, Jeremy, his fiance's mom, had a massive heart attack, and she is not doing well. Her name is Corinne. I said Corinne, and I was corrected. So it's Corinne, Corinne Milner. She is in intensive care on the ventilator, not looking good. But if you're God, you can roll away a stone and say, Lazarus or Corinne, come forth. And if you're dead, he can raise you from the dead. So our, our prayer is not, my prayer is always, God, you can heal her. I mean, he healed Pat because I went to see Pat. She was there too. Helen, Clady. I said, they always go, hi, Reverend, who are you here to see at Memorial? I said, well, two people. So they said, first one. So I said, Pat, Clady, yep, don't have her. I said, well, I wouldn't want her either. I understand. I said, no, she's here. I said, just last night, I was informed that she's here. She has to be here. No, no. I have a Helen, but she's been discharged. I said, oh, well, do you have any other ladies? Because I'll go see them, just in case. She's, <laughs> the lady said, no. I said, okay, the other one is Corinne Milner. So I went to see Corinne and got to pray with her, and Jeremy and Diane were there. So just pray. That, that look. There's something depressing about the hospital anyways. I mean, they don't want, it's not like a cruise ship. They don't want you to stay there. That's why the food is bad. God bless you, Era. That's why the food is bad. <laughs> and it smells like it does. They don't want you going, what? I could live here. They don't want you saying that. So they want to get you well, get you out. And it just, it just, you, you pray. Would you do that? Corinne. Her name is Corinne. Pray really hard. Others are gone. They're traveling. Sickness, whatever. Some are just at home lazy with the remote. Mutant me. Mute, mute, mute. Changing the batteries. Hope They're trying to reverse live stream. Yeah, you can't do that. Not yet. Ready to pray? Pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for what you've given us. We know that we don't have to give, but we give because you told us to and we want to do what you told us to do. We want giving to be worship. We want it to be cheerful. You said God loves a cheerful giver. We don't want to do it with, oh, no. We don't want to do it with, I can't. We don't want to do it with, man, this is hard. You want us to love, to want to, to realize that you're worth it and that it's not about money. God could take care of us. If we gave you every cent we had, you could take care of us. So, Lord, we want to give you all we can give you today, not just money, but our heart. If someone's here and they're not born again, show them that. Show them that they need Jesus Christ as their Savior. And Lord, show us that Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. May we see that today. I ask this in Jesus' name.
Amen. once again and turn to 223 he included me page 223 let's all stand shall we on the first verse junior church you may be dismissed
seated. Sophia, Abby, and Kenzie are coming to sing. Thank you, ladies. That song brought to mind John 15 and verse 2. Listen very carefully. He writes, Jesus said, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Listen to this. And every branch that beareth fruit, Every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Sounds like God's never happy. He's not because he knows we can be better. Daniel chapter 1, if you have your Bible, Daniel, the first chapter. You say, I know that. I've heard some... By the way, Milo's got to be the most spiritual dog around, does he not? Think how much preaching he's heard. I mean, good preaching. Think of all the singing he's heard. Hey, he didn't just, he had to, he had to, wait. He was fortunate to listen to them practice. So he had to hear that. And he stays awake for all the preaching. 
Usually, Daniel chapter 1, I want to read one verse because the story is very familiar. This has kind of been bugging me because of the times we're living in. Sometimes I feel like they have captured me and made me live in their heathen, pagan world. I mean, it wasn't that long ago we weren't doing that bad. Now all of a sudden, right is wrong, and wrong is right. Daniel chapter 1, the premise of that is, Daniel said, you know what? You can kidnap us. You can force us into your city. You can force us to live here and stay here. You can ransack our city and take all the good stuff and bring it to your, to your rotten, heathen, pagan world. Watch this. But God is still here. And anything under God loses. You can change our name. God is still here. You can educate us in the Babylonian schools. But God is still here. You cannot change our mind. Something really got to Daniel. And that something was verse 8. Notice what it says. I know you know the first part of that verse. But in the middle of that verse, he said, there are two things we're not going to digest. We are not going to digest the king's meat and we're not going to digest his wine. Hello? You say, well, I drink in moderation. Well, let me, tell, let me help you. That's stupid. I sin in moderation. That, come on. Daniel said, God's here, king's meat is here. God's here, king's wine is here. We have a problem with that. So you know this whole episode. He said, do this. Give us pulse, whatever that is. You know, it doesn't matter. I mean, when I think of that, I think of shredded wheat. Remember shredded wheat? Those big biscuits of hay? Dried hay? And man, if it wasn't wet, you choked to death. He said, give us pulse to eat. Watch now. Look at this. Verse 12. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days. Let And let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. God's here. We're not moving God down to here. We're keeping God here. You with me? You want us to eat your meat and drink your wine. We're not doing it. Prove us. Verse 12, prove us. Let us prove to you, watch, let us prove to you where God is. You think there were Jews 
They got captured from Jerusalem that ate that meat and drank that wine? Of course there were. But that is not an excuse ever for you or I to do anything. They're, they're not my God. They're not my example. They're my example of their following God. But Daniel made it clear that you can change where we live, but God is still here. You, right, this story? So they gave them pulse and water. Here's the verse I want to read with you because you know the story. The verse is verse 15. And at the end of 10 days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter. That would be a good title, wouldn't it? I don't want anybody to get offended. It doesn't say fairy. It says fairer and fatter. Say, how in the world do you get fat eating pulse and drinking water? You don't. That's something God did. Notice it says in verse 15, at the end of 10 days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Remember what Daniel said? Daniel said, Prove us, verse 12. Prove thy servant. Let us, let us keep God where God is. Without your meat, without your wine, just give us, give us um, I, whatever, you know, I don't know, oatmeal. Some of you like oatmeal. I mean, oatmeal's great if it's, the ratio is twice the sugar to the amount of oatmeal. But whatever it was, Paul, you know, it just doesn't say you get over work, you've worked hard all day, your sandwich was kind of, at lunch was kind of plain. So, man, it's dinner, you're home from work, you're ready for dinner, you go to your wife, hey, I smell something, what is it? It's pulse, honey. I mean, that just doesn't, that's not the same as pork chops. Hey, not the same as pizza. Not the same as paschetti and meatballs. You all are saying it wrong. Starts with a P, not an S. Paschetti. And it fits the sermon, right? Pulse. When it says, verse 15, that they were fairer, it literally means that by giving up, watch, by giving up the meat, not eating the meat and not drinking the wine. They were fair. It means they were better off. Say, well, that wasn't a pulse. No, that was God. We know that. I mean, Daniel didn't say, hey, that we're kind of on a health that. We're, you know, the Gregotarians. We just feel like... You know, this would be better. No, the issue, the issue was God. Hey, I, you know, I'm not here to argue with you. But if Daniel was willing to give up wine, and he didn't need any wine, you and I must be better off without it. Well, I just believe in moderation. I mean, I hear preachers I can't believe say that. I'm nowhere in the Bible does it say you shouldn't drink. I'm going to send them a Bible. Wine is a mocker. Woe to him that giveth his neighbor. It doesn't say lots of drink. It doesn't say above moderation. So that's what's interesting here is that they were better without the wine. You'll always do better sober. Oh, I have a little wine. It doesn't bother me. It, it will. Because it, it has this, proverb says it, it has this sting to it. It does something to you. So, so when he says in verse 15 that not only were they fair, he said they were fatter. In other words, there was no lack. They had plenty. Don't, 
don't we have a God? Man, I hope we do. I hope we have a God that when we stand for him and try to keep him at the top, that he's better and plenty. Pray with me. Father, help us today to be honest. Help us to be humble enough to realize you're trying to speak to us. Help us to be honest enough to say, yeah, it's me and I need to do something about it. Lord, thank you for your word. May we stand and stand right and stand up and stand out. For Jesus' sake. So may all that's said today honor you, Holy Spirit. Take it right where it needs to go. Leave it there. Let it burn a little bit so that all of us will say, God's speaking to me. Thank you, Lord, for your word, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Before Daniel got to Babylon. While Daniel was in Jerusalem, God was here. Do you understand? He didn't all of a sudden say, man, we're going through the fire. We better put God first. God was already first. So my hint to you is, say, man, I'm, I'm running along pretty smooth now. I would put God at the top. I would make sure God's at the very top. Daniel didn't just come up with some principles and standards because he's in Babylon. There were certain things Daniel did not do. And it's easy when you keep God at the top of everything Everything falls below that. So what Daniel is saying is, you can eat meat. We don't need meat. We need God. You can drink wine. We don't want to drink wine. We don't need wine. Water will do. And I don't know if you saw this or saw it lately, but verse 20 says, And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, that was Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In fact, God calls them, verse 17, children. So when we say, you know, these, these, they weren't children, they were teenagers. But he calls them, verse 17, children. As for these four children, God gave them something. Verse 20 says, And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. So the point there is, Daniel said, we just want to show you God. We're not trying to be better than you. We're just trying to show you that God's better than, than all you have. It sounds to me like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are trying to convert Babylon. They're not just saying... Watch this, because I'm going to get into this. It needs to be said. They weren't just saying, y'all are wrong. Heathens. I don't want the world to think that I have a, a relationship with God that's all, don't do this, don't do that. No, 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 no. I want them to think, God is so good at the top, why would I lower myself for your meat? God is so good being at the top. Why would I lower myself for your wine? And Daniel is saying, we don't, we don't need it. He didn't say, this is what we're going to do. I'll get a lawyer. Remember verse 12, I'm sorry, verse 8 says, he purposed in his heart and that he actually requested, verse 8, he requested. He said, I want to show you something. I want to show you our God. Are you with me? I want to show you what God can do, and he doesn't need your meat, and he doesn't need your wine. 
And the guy said, the eunuch said, man, I could die. Yeah, but Daniel said, but if we turn out better, isn't that what the king wants? Old Neb? I'm not saying Nebuchadnezzar takes up too much time. So if I say Neb, I'm talking about Nebuchadnezzar. See how much time that takes? Old Neb? Old Neb would want guys that are, right? You read it, verse 20, they're ten times better than anything he had. So what Neb say to them? What do you guys, what's with you guys? What do you do? What do you have? Daniel said, we ate pulse. Neb said, pulse? Yeah, pulse. And we drank water. Water? Man, I've got the finest wines, the finest grapes, the finest vineyards, and I've got the finest meat. And Neb said, what, there's something else. And Daniel said, well, there is. And he took him to the wall. Daniel, I'm pretty sure this is in the Hebrew. He took him to the wall, and he said, hey, king, here's where God is. Here's where you are. And so since we left God at the top, put God at the top, made God the king of everything at the top, he, he's it. He did that for us. I don't know what Daniel knew. I don't know what Daniel was thinking when they came in, yanked them out of their homeland, and literally carted them off. I mean, against their will, took them to Babylon. I don't know about you, I'd be in a bad mood. Huh? We got meat for you and wine. Wouldn't you go, good, I'm hungry and I'm mad you drug me out of my... Not Daniel. Daniel said, I'm going to be saying, we got to come up with an a abbreviation for them. The children, the three children. Daniel says, thanks for the offer. Thanks for the wine, but no thanks. Daniel made a decision, I believe, before he got to Babylon. See, when you put God here and leave him there, it's easy to keep him there. But when you let God slip, hard to get him back up there. Missed church once or twice. I'm not hearing anything. This is where you say, oh me. All the time people say to me, Pastor, I didn't realize how easy it would be to miss church. Oh, it's easy. But if you keep it at the top, it's easier to keep God at the top than try to get him back up there. So that was Daniel's whole point. He made up his mind. Daniel and the three children made up their mind. They would do the right thing no matter where they were, no matter what the consequences. For instance, chapter 3. Remember when they said, that this is in the Hebrew, some of you won't appreciate this, we ain't bowing. Ain't's in Hebrew. That's legitimate in Hebrew. We ain't bowing. I know, I know, I know. Don't write me nasty letters. And we, we ain't bowing. The king said, wait, wait a minute. You know, if you don't bow, I will, I will melt you into ashes. They said, hey. If that's what you've got to do, do it. But we're doing what we've got to do. You know the story, right? Did the guys that threw the three children in die? Did the guys they threw in die? You think Nebuchadnezzar's catching on? You think he's going, wow, what, what, is with these, what is it with these guys? You know why you and I are here? You know why it's dark in our world? 
God has left us here to show the world what he's like. You've not seen rain before. By the way, hey, it's raining. It wasn't supposed to, but it's raining. Hey, the weathermen should not get paid. Okay, get over it. I know you can hear it. You see, I know, I know. In all of our actions, you and I, in all of the words that we speak, in all the places we go, God wants to be seen. He says, verse 12, prove thy servants. He didn't say, prove thy ten times better. I mean, I think Daniel and the three children said, we're better than you. We know we are. You know, you've you got a bunch of gods. They're all losers. Our God's a real winner. And what you ought to do is let God show himself. And so they agree. I, I want you to listen very carefully to this verse because you know this verse. It's kind of like um, we know it, but we know it too good. So we miss the point of it. Take a, take a good deep breath because you're going to need it. Just. So when I say this reference, you're oh, I know that verse. I know you do. But it's possible for us to know a verse but miss what it's saying. Romans 8, 28. Don't quote it. It says, and we know. Watch, this is fun. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Here's the fun part. To them who are the called according to his purpose. You know what Daniel was quoting? Romans 8, 28. Say, he didn't have it. No, but he knew the principle of it. God, we're here for you. If they kill us because we won't eat their food and drink their wine, we believe we're standing for you. We're keeping you at the top. This, we're here. You're here. I'm here. They were there for his, watch, watch, his purpose. You like all the working together for good. That's his purpose in your life. That stuff that comes that you don't get, that you don't, you don't want to deal with, that stuff, you know, all things work together for good. That's his purpose. Not our purpose. He knows what he's doing. Lights go out, I'm gone. There were people that ate that meat and drank that wine that shouldn't have. There were people that bowed to that image in Daniel chapter 3 that shouldn't have. There were people in Daniel chapter 6 that didn't pray to the real God when they should have. They're not going to like us. They don't like that we have this God that we answer to. See, nobody wants to answer to God. I mean, don't you want this religion, eating meat and drinking wine? Daniel refused the king's food. He refused the wine. You always do better when you do what God wants. Notice two points. we got to get out of here because we're going to lose power. I can feel it. Hey, all things work together for good, except when you lose power. At least it's light out. Number one, they chose the positive. They didn't say this whole, this whole 
This whole country stinks. You stink, Nab. Your wine stinks. Your meat stinks. Your astrologers stink. Your magicians stink. What did, what did Daniel say? He said, we would rather do pulse and water. That's what we want. If you want to do that, we don't. You could do that. We're, we, we're, please, let, show, prove, just God can, God can maintain us. And, and the verse 15, the fairer and fatter, they turned out better than everybody that ate meat and drank wine. I mean, what, who would want that? I like meat. I like wine. W-H-I-N-E. I don't like W-I-N-E, but I like W-H-I-N-E. I'm all into that wine. Amen? Come on. Some of you are good at it. Something about Daniel got the king's attention. Nebuchadnezzar wasn't a stranger to their loyalty to their God. Verse 12, they said, just, just let us, verse 12, let us prove it. If you had to prove you're a Christian, could you? I mean, when it all, when people look at me, oh, you know, the whole, it goes all the time, oh, what do you do? I'll go guess. They'll go, doctor. I'll go, no. And they go through this whole thing of trying to guess what I am. They, no one's at one time. One time, one lady said to me, you're a minister, aren't you? And I went. Daniel and the three children resolved in their heart that they wouldn't be connected to anything that was connected to Babylon. They disconnected. Hey? 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 We're separate from that. We're in the world. We're not of the world. But we don't need, and it isn't so much that, oh, I don't get to drink. I did drink. I don't need to drink. Okay, just stay with me now. Don't judge me. Just listen very carefully. God, God can make you fatter. Stop. God can make you, verse 15, fatter. He can give you more plenty than anything the world can give. Fairer, see those words? Fairer and fatter. Fairer and fatter. They were better in doing what they did than doing what the king wanted them to do. They didn't go after, they could have went after him. What? You know, Daniel could have said, one kills people in their chariots all the time. You know, drunken chariot driving. And we're against that. What did he say? Daniel basically said, we don't need it. I drink all I want. I don't want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So I think the world needs to see a positive message. Hey, hey, let's go. I'm sorry. I'm, you know, feel bad. If you're going to feel bad, go for it. Feel as bad as you can. I, hey, we're going fishing Sunday. No, I can't. I got to go to church. Let me help you. That's not positive. It, it, it's kind of like. Man, I really want wine. I really want meat, but oh, God's watching. Daniel is not saying that. Daniel is saying, our God's better than anything you have. He's better than you. This place, this whole place stinks. He didn't say that, but it kind of came out that his message was, uh, what you're offering me is not as good as God can give me, so I'm going to go with God. I'm going to choose what God. And Daniel, he didn't just say, we're not going to eat your food. We're not going to drink your wine. He said, prove us. 
That means we have experience in what God does. Verse 19, the king communed with them, and among them all was none, was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. Did you see the word none? Did you see in verse 20? They were ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers in all his realm. I mean, don't you want that kind of Christianity? Do you want it to be, uh, right, you read your Bible this morning? Yeah, I had to. I'm not me. I got to read my Bible. I got to pray. God is better. God, he's fatter. He'll make you fatter. Boy, you're going to misquote me on this. They chose the positive. Number two, they chose to be better. Ever been around a drunk? Ever been around a glutton? I'm sorry. Look, I'm not going after anybody. Ever been to a buffet? The husband sits here and the wife sits there. Do you know why? So they can fill their front with food. That no, I'm sorry, that nauseates me. Because I have that addiction. You know I love food. It's been years since we've been to a stuff your face. You know, we talk about, yeah, alcohol is bad. So is gluttony. Hear how quiet it is? Because you don't need booze to live, but you need food. So we have to, we have to come up with this balance. I think that's one of the reasons the Lord told us to fast. See how quiet it is? Hey. Oh, I'm fasting. Where's God? Where's God? Say, do you fast? You're not supposed to talk about it. Don't you worry about it. Worry about it if you do. Hey? When Daniel obeyed, it brought God's blessing. I want to be blessed, don't you? Hey? I want to be obedient to God's commands. Because when I'm obedient, he'll bless me. He doesn't just go, well. It brings his blessing. And Daniel would have rather been the children of Israel all of them there, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, the three, they would all have rather been back in Israel, but they said we're in a different place, we're in a heathen place, we'll obey God wherever we are. And you know what? It wasn't that God had to bless them in Jerusalem. He blessed them there. So if you and I will, will do what we're supposed to do right now, right here, he'll bless us. That's what the world needs to see. You don't love God with your thoughts or your words only. You love him by proving it. Verse 12, prove thy servant. It's like Daniel is daring the eunuch to let this happen. You would have to have a lot of confidence in your God, would you not? You would, have, you would have to know. Man, you would have had to go in a closet and seen God and come out and go, okay, I think we can do this. It's 
God has called us to do something for him wherever we are. Are you a Christian? Prove it. Prove it. God answer your prayers? You trusting him for something that only he can do? Once he does that one, the next one's easy. Because he's already proved himself. Who doesn't want to be fairer, better, and fatter? Have plenty. Man, I do. Hey, I do. But I've got to prove it. By making sure he's at the top. And if there's anything, if anything else comes up that makes him look like he's not at the top, I need to choose him. You getting that? I'm trying to send you a subliminal message because there's some things I want to say, but I'm not going to say. I want you to get this. I don't want to say this and then you go, oh, I knew he was going to say that. I don't want to say it and then you go, uh, it figures. Look, the reason I don't drink alcohol is because God's better. You say, well, would God hate that? Yeah, he'd hate smoking too. And the reason I don't smoke is, number one, I can't afford it. I mean, if I'm going to burn money, I'll just burn up $100 bills. This doesn't make God look good. So he's better. If I decide to choose him over anything else, he's going to make sure I'm fairer and fatter. Well, I, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't agree with that. You don't agree with that because you've never done it. That means I really mean it. Well, yeah, yeah, I've been a Christian a long time. Then you ought to be teaching us. You ought to be not some teenage punk. But it's possible no matter how old you are. It's possible. Did you see Trump when he got shot? Did you see him shaking his fist saying fight, fight, fight? Wow. We need him as a church member. Because he'd be here and he'd be a good kid. <laughs> you want me to say it right? Stop. Let's pray. Father, thank you for we need you more than we need anyone or anything else. We need you. We need you to prove. Through us that you can make us fairer and fatter. Speak to hearts. If there's someone here not sure if they're born again, they're not sure they're going to heaven when they die. They can't say, when I die, I'm 100% sure that I will be in heaven. If they can't say that, Lord, please, please work on them so that we can show them from the Bible how they can know. There are a bunch of Christians in this room, and there are probably many watching. Excuse me. And they're saying, those words are throwing me, the fairer and fatter. I know that. But it means to be better and have plenty. Lord, you want your people to be better than anything else in this world. And you want us to have more than anything else that this world can give us. And I pray that will be true. I pray we'll want that. I pray we'll desire that. That we'll say before we leave today, God, prove to me, prove to me that as I obey you, as I do what you want, as I choose you, 
Make it clear. Make it plain. Make it obvious that you're better and you're the plenty that I need. I want to have plenty of God. So, Lord, before we leave, our choice ought to be, I'm choosing God. I'm going to go with all God can do and all God can give. Because God can do way better, way better than anything else, anyone else. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Here, here's your prayer. Here's your desire. Here's your decision. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Preacher, before I leave, I want God to show me. I'm not exactly sure what it means, but I know he could show me. I want him to prove to me that he's better and more plenteous than anything else that I could choose. Help me to choose that in the right way. Help me to trust him so that he will make it obvious to me and others that he's better. The king found none that were like Daniel and the three children. Why? Because they chose God. They said, we're going with God. We're trusting God. We're going to pray. We're going to eat pulse. We're going to drink water. And we're going to honor God and follow God. We're going to put God at the top. And it worked. I pray that will be true for us. Heads bowed. Eyes closed. Preacher, I'm in on that. I'm in on that. Here's my hand. I'm in on that. I want God to work in my life better and more plenteous than I have now. I want, I want, here's my hand, raise them. Here's my hand. Preacher, God speaking to my heart. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. I want that. I need that. I don't want to, I don't want to just eat what the world has. I don't want to just drink what the world gives me. I want what God can give me. I want to settle only for what God. I want to say no to the world, but yes to God. Here's my hand. I haven't raised it. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. I need to do that. 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 Lord Jesus, I pray that at this invitation, you will make it hard for anyone that ought to make a decision. Make it hard for them to stand there. Make it hard for them to be neutral. I pray this in Jesus' name. Piano's playing. Would you stand? As you stand, she's playing. There's a decision. You just, you just come to this altar and say, Lord, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose you. I'm going to put you at the top. It's going to be hard on me, but that's your purpose. All things work together for good. Your purpose for me, because I love you, is better than anything else I could get. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Come on. Come on. God speak to your heart. You need to make a decision. You need to make a choice today. You need to make a choice. A choice. I'm choosing God. I'm choosing God no matter what I go through, no matter where I am, no matter what people say, no matter what happens. I want God. I want God. I need God. I'm choosing God. I'm choosing what God can do. I'm not choosing meat, not choosing wine. I'm choosing what God can do. Come on, come on. She's playing. She's going to play it through one more time so you can pray. If you need to come, come on this verse. Would you do that as she plays? Say, I'm making a decision right here. Are you? Are you really? Really? Is that what you want to call it? So you won't take the effort to walk down the aisle? You won't take the effort to kneel up here, stand up here, sit up here and say, okay, God, I mean this. I mean this. If you're up here praying, pray. I'm going to pray and close. Father, I'm, I'm glad that you're so much better than anything else. Any, anything the world could offer, you're better. We need to know that. We need to live like we need to prove it. May we prove to this world that you're better. Ten times better. Help us, Lord. Spirit of God, help us. That we will be just so unlike everything that's here. 
And they'll not just see us as odd or strange. They'll see us better. They'll see us better and having plenty. May we, by our face, by what we say, may it just look like we have plenty. Help us, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.